This has not been exposed anywhere in the world, no festival or anything. I'm giving you and a few other people a look at it first. Sometimes that's a better message um, to a distributor. Glenn, how do you get paid? Please tell us. A couple different ways. Um, so um, always a commission, um, a percentage of whatever my filmmaker makes. So if there's an advance from uh, the distributor or royalties paid later on, I usually get a commission on whatever, and, and that's, that's a negotiable commission, uh, depending on the circumstances of the film, whether it's already in a major festival or if I'm working on it from the beginning, we can negotiate what the commission is. Um, often I also work for a consulting fee as well, um, because I spend, you know, most producer reps, I would say, um, you know, tend to throw films against the wall, see if they stick, if they don't make the deal, move on. Um, I deal with very much true independent films that need a lot of hand-holding and a lot of tender loving care. And so I fashion myself as both kind of a producer rep and a consultant. So I'm usually paid an upfront fee in addition to my commission, really to help with the fact that I'm gonna negotiate the contract, I'm gonna handle all that, I'm gonna spend time with them to make sure they understand the industry, understand the buyers, under, you know, help out maybe getting them an international sales agent. So I try, to, I try to fashion myself as kind of a distribution consultant and a producer rep. Are all your fees uh, like one-time fees or are there any that are continual? Just one time. One it's time, okay. just one time. Yeah, it's usually an upfront fee. And then um, in the way I do it, I don't, I don't put a term on my, my deals. I'm, I feel like I, I'm hired for however long it takes me to get the film distribution um, or a festival. I'm also brought on as a festival advocate quite often, so that's part of the, the fee structure is that I'm gonna advocate the film to festivals, programmers I've gotten to know over time to try and help it get some kind of promotional boost before we sell the film. So I've gotten to know a lot of programmers over the years. So sometimes I'm brought in pre-festival um, to call programmers and just make sure they're watching the movie. Um, also to pitch it, but I think the biggest thing there is just to make sure they're watching it. Um, you know, if you add up the number of you know, entries into these festivals, and you look at the number of people that have been hired to watch them, it's almost impossible, right, that this few number of people are watching this number of movies over a three-month period. So there are films, some films are not getting watched or they're just being watched by an intern or an underling. So I'm there to try to make sure that someone um, of significance is watching the movie and giving it a chance. Um, in addition to maybe consulting my filmmakers on what festivals to apply to, is it right for Sundance? Is it a South by Southwest kind of movie? Um, if not, is it more of a heartland, Seattle? There's all kinds of great festivals, but you know there are different festivals that have different strategies. So I'm here for that, you know, kind of in addition to everything else. Have you ever had filmmakers say, skip the festivals? I, 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 I oh, know yeah. it won't get into this one and I won't get into that one and these other ones I don't care as much about. Absolutely. Um, and, it, you know, from an advisory point of view, I've even said that too to some people that um, uh, your, your film isn't right. It's commercial. Um, it's, um, you know, if you have a family movie, right? Um, Sundance doesn't take a lot of family films. I mean, they have, they, I mean, they might have a section where they take like one or two really, you know, big family films, but they're not going to take small kind of dog or pony movies, right? Those kind of movies um, aren't right for festivals. Um, Horror films, you know, in general, um, of a certain level, don't. You know, there's a horror audience out there that doesn't really require kind of the lift of a film festival to to get it um, out there. And to a certain degree, festivals really only add so much value these days to a film festival. And the real value, at least pre-COVID, for me, for of Sundance and South by and and Tribeca, um, those are festivals that are attended by buyers. And so they're in a room, they're feeling the audience watch the movie. Um, it's the only place where distributors make mistakes, right? Where they where they like, oh, they, they get a feeling like, okay, well, let's go bid on the movie off of this feeling they have in the theater. Um, they're never gonna have that feeling when they're watching the film on their cell phone while they're driving or or however they're, they're watching your movie, right? Um, it's, um, so those festivals in particular have that, in addition to some branding value, 
they also had the value of having the people there watching the movie. There's another several thousand film festivals in North America that buyers just don't go to. Really great festivals. Um, and maybe one or two show up because they're on a panel or something, but they're not flocking there to watch the content to see if there's films to buy. They know that at some point those films will eventually get to them and they'll be able to watch it in their office. It's not worth flying all over the country to see these to these festivals. Um, and the so the value to a distribute the value there is maybe if we have a film that's not right for Sundance, didn't get Tribeca, etc., but it goes to Seattle. Then when we're going to the distributor saying, hey, here's this great movie and it just premiered in Seattle, check it out. And you pitch the movie and then they watch it and take it out. Now the fact that it's in Seattle goes in one ear and out the other, right? It's not a heavy consideration for them like, oh wow, it played Seattle. Not that we want to flog Seattle, I'm going to get all kinds of hate mail about Seattle, but Seattle's a great festival, but the buyers just aren't there. And so the distributors are going to watch it on Vimeo at that point or Blu-ray. Um, so um, there's just there's just marginal value for festivals at that point, but there's lots of other good reasons to go to festivals other than will it get distribution because of them. Um, you know, it's the best experience uh, you have with a film usually. Uh, experience it with an audience. It's better than theatrical per se, where it's which I you know is kind of cold. There's not like a ready willing audience. Uh, you go to the Limley and you're there's five seats filled and it just doesn't have the same impact as a as a festival screening where people are there to you know to purposefully enjoy a film like they really want to enjoy it um and um other reasons are uh to get feedback from fellow filmmakers to see other people's films to meet other people you might work with in the future to maybe meet someone who wants to invest in your next movie there's all sorts of good things that come out of festivals but really for setting up distribution there's, it's really minimal what what they what they provide for that. Um, um, so when I'm talking to filmmakers, I have to kind of deal with their expectations and what they want to do, and give advice on like how to proceed strategically to get the film the best possible position. And usually, I'm going to say if it's not a Sundance or a South by or a Tribeca kind of film, we can go for festivals and do that. But at any time, if you get tired of that. And you're like, we haven't gotten to the festival. Can we go ride to buyers? We can because it's only providing a little bit of color to the fact that you've got a good film already, in my view. Um, so and so, when filmmakers do come to me and say, "Let's just go straight to buyers," no problem, um, really, no problem at all. Um, it's to a certain degree too. Um, some. Um, I've had, you know, there are places like, there's some streamer, a couple of streamers um, that I've approached with films before and they, once a film's in a festival, they've already kind of looked at it, not, not that they've seen the film, but they've kind of digested what it is and made an assessment um, purely off of an image and a synopsis. We want to check that out or we don't. Um, and there's a lot they don't. So I've had a little bit more success with some films, especially documentaries, um, if I'm going to them without anything and saying, hey, this has not been exposed anywhere in the world, no festival or anything. I'm giving you and a few other people a look at it first. Sometimes that's a better message um, to a distributor than, hey, we played Seattle. Because um, sometimes I'll get, yeah, we, looked, we saw it in the listings, not for us. You know, you'll get sometimes. And then I've got to beg and plead them to watch it and give it another chance. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, at the same time, though, lots of filmmakers just want to play festivals, right? They just, that's just a thing. And very understandably, there's a lot of great stuff about it. So, you know, the I'm here to advise on strategy. And then once we've decided with the filmmaker what to do, then I'll implement it, whatever kind of, whatever they want to do. So they want to play festivals. Do they also want to attend or some are okay getting into these bigger festivals and not going? Yeah, you get different. T most I find want to attend. I mean, we're talking pre-COVID again, but when you could. But um, um, most I find want to attend. Occasionally I'll find someone who doesn't really care about going. Um, 
but overwhelmingly in 90%, I think, want to go and have the experience of, of the crowd and, and all the things that you get out of the fil film festival. Yeah. Sure. Q&A. Yeah, Those Q &A are great. Is, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Right. Feeling the energy, yeah. What red flag should a filmmaker look for if they are considering hiring a producer rep? Well, um, so I would say look at all their, go to IMDb, look at the, their history of all the films that they've sold, um, call those filmmakers, um, if, you know, dig in, find a website address, you know, if, if it's not readily available, get to those people and, and call them and see what kind of experience they had. Um, I imagine that all producer reps and distributors and sales agents all have people that don't like them, but you, hopefully you find someone that's got more people that like them that don't like them. Um, I think, um, I, I think, you know, when I, when I pitch myself for, and I'm never really cognizant of like who else they're looking at. Like I don't have a sense of my competition that way. It's never like me against the same three guys for a film. I, it just doesn't, it's, it's fairly, um, I find that I think most films that I talk to about repping their films um, aren't really considering many other options. Um, that, I, that's the sense I get. I don't really ask them about it or, or really care. Um, but um, I, I can say this. So I know when I decided to get into the business, I was working for an international sales agent at the time. And looking around the landscape, I felt like there was a need for someone to do what I do a little bit more deeply than I felt like other producer reps were doing it. Like I kind of alluded to before, there's a lot of just kind of, okay, toss it to the wall. If none of these 10 distributors want it, moving on, you know, um, which leaves everybody empty. And, and so I really try to do, I, I try to do the job of making sure I understand the full distribution landscape who are the best possible options for this film? If none of them want, want it, what are the possible second tier options for them to do? I also have my own tricks of the trade. If something were to fall to self-distribution per se, what's the, what are the best practices there? Who's the best aggregator to use? You know, those situations. So I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to provide a full kind of consulting service around what I do as opposed to that. So I, I think that um, when you're looking for a producer rep, it's kind, of, it's kind of like references, you know, do you like the films they've sold in the past? Does your film feel like a fit? Um, you know, have they made deals? You know, can, you, can they point to films that have had, had deals with Netflix and Hulu and Showtime and HBO and, and IFC, et cetera? Um, but yeah. I, it's funny. I should probably take another look at the at the landscape of producer reps out there besides myself and see what options people have to to um, maybe give a fuller answer on that. But yeah, to a certain degree, I think that's probably the the way to go about it. 